Welcome back to The Social Regressive, y'all. We're taking a break from 6mm arc to do a mini-series showing 308 hunting loads and what kind of devastation they can cause. We're gonna see how some of these compare. I've got some Winchester loads back here, but first I'm actually gonna take a look at a hand load that I've put together. You may not know that Federal's Edge TLR bullets, you can actually purchase just the bullets. Uh, normally you can get these as loaded ammunition. It's premium ammunition, it's pretty expensive. The bullets are pretty expensive too, but if you wanna cook one of these up for your own, any kind of 30 cal rifle, if you have a 308 like this one, 300 Weatherby Magnum, 300 Winchester Magnum, heck, you could probably load these up in 300 Blackout. These are bonded bullets with a long ballistic tip, a very high ballistic coefficient, a boat tail. These are designed to fly through the air extremely well and then to hold together and make a big devastating mess when it hits. So today we're gonna group these, see how they group up on paper. We're gonna test the velocities and see how closely my hand loads are, are still performing. And uh, we're gonna hit some gel, see what kind of a mess we can make. Today's rig is a Stevens 200 that I cooked up a while back. This has a 22 inch barrel on it that came off an axis. And this has a Horus Hover 5 to 20 by 50 millimeter scope. Twenty-five thirty-eight. So velocities, okay, uh, they're not the best, but uh, not too shabby. This is just using some uh, Lake City 08 brass, some stuff I had laying around. Um, yeah, it's not too shabby, it's not great, but uh, yeah, it's definitely good enough for deer or elk. It looks like I did change the harmonics on this a little bit when I uh, did some work, so I'll have to kind of redo this, come up with a new load, but uh, let's see what this does on gel. <laughs> oh, that shook him around. That came in just a tad low, so I'm going to send a buddy after it. See if we can pick it up just a little bit. The horizontal was good. <laughs> there we go. That's a good spot. There's hit number one. You can see that it's really low. Now this did track pretty straight back through here. You can see that it's a nice wide channel of devastation. So that is eh, probably up to about an inch and a half wide cutting through. You can see the blue tip right there. So then this just keeps on going and starts to come down. Came out the bottom. All right. This is hit number two. So this one was pretty squarely in the middle of the gel. Uh, some bullets are just a little bit crazy and they don't want to stay in the block as you'll see here. But uh, it looks like this opened up very quickly, about an inch in. And this is just huge. This is a massive three-dimensional channel. This was a ton of energy and that's why you see all this soot in here. It would have expanded this gel really far, atomized a bunch of it, which is flammable. And uh, when it collapsed again, it would have exploded like a... Uh, I don't know, like a, a diesel cylinder when it all compresses that it would uh, actually catch fire. So that's why you see all the soot. Uh, this continues cutting, kind of a leaf pattern. Maybe it tumbled back through here and then just blasted right out the top. There's that blue tip and you can see that it gets just massively wide through here. And that's in all directions. This is not something that's just kind of a leaf cut. This is something that would mangle internal organs. So yeah, it comes through here, gets into the second block, and the fact that it made it into the second block at all is pretty impressive. This 20% stuff is really tough. So the fact that it exited the block and flew out somewhere, 
after about, oh, let's see, this is a 16 inch block. So maybe add another six inches. We're at about 22 inches. And that's when it finally flew out. Uh, so yeah, just tons of energy in that. Let's take a close look at that permanent wound channel. You can see that it begins opening up at two inches and it keeps going and finally settles down at about 11 inches. And remember that this is 20% gel, not 10% like you normally see in say handgun tests or some of the tests that I performed with 223 before where it was simulating pig flesh. This simulates heavier deer flesh or elk flesh. And so this is going to put up a much bigger fight. So the fact that we get this huge temporary wound channel that you see in this picture, and then the permanent wound channel that you see here is just amazing. This is a two and one eighth inch wide cut at its widest. And you can see how long it maintains that. That's going to be just ripping through all kinds of lung tissue and whatever else gets in the way. Now we do have some other tracks going on through here, some that got kind of blended up a little bit, uh, but you can see how far those bullets came out. This is a Nosler Acubond, and then behind it, that is Winchester Deer Season. It's going to be, uh, both of these are 150 grain bullets, and the 175 that we just put through the gel, you can see just keeps on trucking. These have stopped at about 19 inches and at 23 inches, this one was still going and still cutting a nastier path than the other ones and it just flew out of the block. So I imagine that somewhere there's a herd of dead moose and the Canadian authorities are trying to figure out what could have killed all of them. Either that or it's in orbit. If you hear anything weird, like a, a strange object being shot down over Canada, then I think you'll know what actually happened. This is the only thing that seems to have sheared off of that bullet. Everything else seems to be clean. Yes, it's really you know dirty through here from soot, but I don't see any other bullet parts. So with that in mind, I think that the Edge TLR, or the uh, Terminal Ascent as they're now called, that this is going to be the standard if you want to really put a hurting on an animal and make sure that it goes down with one shot. This 175 grain is going to be amazing and everything from, yes, this is you know designed for those big magnums, but this is one that, as you can see, is going to perform really well in 308. And don't forget it's big brother, this is the 200 grain. And so this is going to have even more of that momentum that it can put through the target. And this is one to seriously consider if you're gonna be dealing with bigger, heavier animals. If you want to step up to those magnums, don't forget that Federal actually has this loaded ammunition that you can buy. Or if you want to purchase the bullets and load them up yourself, help yourself. Thanks so much for watching, you guys, and make sure you like, share, and subscribe so you don't miss the next video, which is going to be the Nosler Acubon, the daddy. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, be sure to like, share, and most importantly, subscribe. Even if you didn't like this particular content, go ahead and subscribe. There's probably something coming that's more up your alley. Check out this playlist right here. This is going to have videos in a similar vein to what you just watched. These two videos we cherry picked for you. And finally, The Social Regressive is on Patreon. So you can become a patron of the destructive arts and earn some goodies while helping us to provide high quality videos just by kicking us a few bucks a month. Thanks so much for your patronage.